We're getting two brand new Nintendo Switches by the end of the year. You have to consult your doctor before trying Stadia. What a stupid name. I know it's supposed to be like Stadium, but still. Finally, we get another Nintendo Direct. Except it's by PlayStation and apparently it wasn't very good. Welcome to Woods Gaming News! You're probably better off watching Spawn Wave, honestly. And if I'm gonna keep doing these weird news videos, I might actually need some kind of intro for them. So, lo looking at you guys, can someone send me something not terrible? I have a lot of really pointless stuff to talk about today, and I've pulled myself away from Sekiro and Cuphead on Switch long enough to actually make a video, which arguably is gonna be a lot easier than playing both of those games. I just feel like there's a lot of things happening right now in gaming news that I should talk about. I mean, I already hyped up Stadia and then they announced it, so I should probably actually talk about how it turned out for me. And then a lot of you actually asked me to talk about the state of play thing, which I don't know why, because there's not much to say, honestly. But there is one kind of exciting piece of news that's been regurgitated and thrown in our faces for the last year and a half. Hey, did you guys know that we're getting new Nintendo Switch models? Maybe? Possibly? It's still just a rumor because Nintendo refuses to actually acknowledge any of this. The Wall Street Journal, once again, which is where a lot of these rumors are coming from, have put out an article saying that by the end of this year, we're getting two new versions of the Switch, both a Mini and a Pro. And if you've been following along with not only the tabloids, but this channel over the last year and a half, you'll know that this is something that we've bounced back and forth on for, for the last year and a half. And these rumors are always inevitable, like whether or not they are going to happen or not, they're, they're always going to circulate. And I think it started with a rumored pro version of the Switch because people found some kind of data mined thing coming something. And then it turned into a mini version of the Switch and then we bounced back to no, it's actually a pro version of the Switch. And then we bounced back again to we're getting a mini version of the Switch by the end of this year. And if you look up any of this, you'll find people speculating on their wants and their needs for either of these systems and I definitely did my own and we can talk about that really quickly but now we've landed on actually we're getting both and again this is all coming from the Wall Street Journal so take it with a pinch of salt because it, until Nintendo actually says yes these things are happening then they're not actually happening but as I've said before there's no smoke without fire and Wall Street Journal keeps reporting on this they keep swearing they have an inside man that knows that this stuff is happening so I, I, I really do believe no smoke without fire and if they keep on prodding this fireplace and making more smoke come out they better be pretty damn sure that they're right. According to them, it sounds like the miniature version of the system is exactly what I was saying it should be and kind of what I was hoping it would be. A smaller 3DS successor type system that resembles the Vita. We don't have any Joy-Cons to worry about because in reality that's impossible anyway. Where is my Switch? Like, I'm sorry, but simple math will tell you that you cannot make this system any smaller if you're keeping the Joy-Cons because the Joy-Cons, they just determine the size of the system. If you try and make it any smaller, the Joy-Cons are just gonna stick out or stupid like. So unless they were gonna make miniature versions of the Joy-Cons, which is just not a good idea to start diving down that avenue, it was always gonna be one unit of a system with non-removable Joy-Cons that was just a lot smaller. Apparently it's not even gonna have a rumble feature, which makes sense to me because for one, the HD rumble is pretty expensive in general. So cutting that out will cut down on costs, but also think about it. Does your Vita rumble? Does your 3DS rumble? You don't really need it in a handheld only system. So if we're cutting that cost, and we're cutting the cost of just having removable Joy-Cons in general and now it's just all one unit and you don't have to put a dock in which apparently costs something like 90 bucks retail if you're buying it on its own you would really like to hope that we're gonna get a Switch mini version for like half the price of the Switch that's a pretty great jumping on point for people that can't afford the whole system and the Pro model they didn't really have anything to talk about there other than don't expect like a PlayStation 4 Pro leap in other words using this word Pro is just something that us as gamers have have been using because it's what we think of when we think of an upgrade to hardware but Nintendo have never really gone with the pro approach. It will most likely be a new Switch or a new Switch XL. Think about the 3DS to the new 3DS XL. Yes it was a little bit better as far as how it ran some of the games but for the most part you are paying for an upgrade to the actual hardware. A different button layout, a bigger screen, more quality parts. It was just nicer and sleeker in general. I really loved the look of the new 3DS XL and it kind of made the old 3DS instantly look just dated. And that 
while it will be kind of sad, is what I'm kind of hoping they do with a new Switch. They'll make it look even sleeker, even sexier, and we might end up looking back at this model even a year or two from now and thinking, oh, it kind of does look outdated. How did I never notice that? For another example of what I mean, I really thought the Wii U pad looked really sleek and cool when I first got it. And now, it's, 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 it's almost like we're seeing the comparison here already of, oh, geez, that looks dated. Stuff like that. And hey, I'm sure it will be a little bit more impressive as far as what it can do. I've been hearing a lot of talk and rumors about a new Nvidia chip going inside the thing, whether it's just a newer version or Nintendo even designing their own Nvidia chip with Nvidia, something that just runs the games better. Maybe we can see a lot of these third party games get boosted from like 720 to 1080p when you're playing it in dock mode. Maybe a game like Breath of the Wild won't have any frame rate issues rather than just a few. And honestly, I do think that this is inevitable, whether it's a mini or an Excel version, there's some kind of revision of the Switch on the way. I swear I am not going to talk about this topic again unless there's some hard proof or Nintendo themselves talk about it. It's just a concept that really excites me. It's a topic I love talking about and feel free to share your thoughts down below. And then Google revealed Stadia, which sounds like a prescribed drug. It really does. Prior to the announcement, I made a video talking about what I thought it might be and that I was kind of excited because if anyone could actually compete in the gaming industry at this point, it would be a Goliath company like Google, like Amazon. And then we saw it and you know, I'm kind of glad that it ended up not being a console and being just an, an online streaming service because it means I don't have to go out and buy a console for starters. And secondly, the whole concept of this and the whole idea of this, and I think the only reason why this will work is because it's kind of futuristic. It is moving into the future of gaming. And whether we like it or not, and believe me, you're talking to someone who's very much a physical gamer, someone who is very much going to hold on to physical gaming and physical media for as long as he possibly can. I do believe that the future is going to be digital. I mean, we can't avoid that. At some point, it's just going to happen. You know, the newer generations of kids come along and they just don't care like a lot of us older people do. And there's going to be a whole new market for this kind of stuff and it's going to explode and slowly we're going to die and that's what's going to take over. It's bleak, but that is what's going to happen. It is the future and this is the start of it. It doesn't mean you have to play it. It doesn't mean you have to enjoy it. There's going to be more than enough physical media for you to play, collect, to store up and get dust all over for the rest of the years you have left on this planet. Trust me. But there is going to be this whole side of gaming that's going to be moving into the digital streaming age. Right now, obviously, it still kind of sounds like a bad idea because it's the first time we're hearing about it. Internet speeds for most people aren't at the point where this is even viable. There's going to be a small selection of people that are going to have speeds fast enough to actually play these games without some kind of lag. And for those that don't know what this is, it's essentially an online streaming. Think of Netflix, but for video games. The games are constantly running on servers, updating themselves, patching themselves. They just kind of exist up in the digital space. And when you want to play them, you sign into your preferred playing area of choice, whether it's your computer, your tablet, your phone, whatever. And you just kind of sign into the game server and just start playing games like Assassin's Creed. They're going to have that playing and running on a server and you can just jump into the game and start playing. It definitely opens up a lot of doors for gaming and it pushes us past what uh, consoles are capable of, at least right now. You won't even need that beefy of a computer to play a lot of the games because again, they're streaming and it requires really nothing from you other than a stable internet connection or at least a really good one. I hope that makes sense. I know a lot of you are going to be really hesitant to get on board with something like this and you might even have wanted me to be like, yeah, but I can't help but see the possibilities and what it could lead to and I can't help but just accept the fact that despite what I want out of gaming, it is the future and I'm just going to have to look at the positives about it and the pros about it. Maybe we can never get to the point where there's literally no lag or input lag between me and the game if I'm streaming it. But man, I feel like there would be, right? I mean, it's the future. And finally, we have the <laughs> before mentioned Nintendo Direct that was actually PlayStation. I guess this is a thing they're doing now. I didn't hear about this b at all. I mean, I had a kind of busy week last week. I know a lot of you know what I'm talking about. I was kind of tuned out of the gaming scene for a little while. So I don't, I don't remember this thing getting announced. I didn't hear about this thing getting announced. I literally woke up one day half an hour after it had happened and then watched it. And then everyone was talking about how disappointing it was. I'm like, really? Like, I didn't, how can you be disappointed in something that I didn't even know existed 10 minutes ago? And then I watched it and 
yeah, it was a little bit disappointing. <laughs> I can't lie. Honestly, it was so unrememberable that I can't remember any of it other than the start because the start was the most disappointing thing for me because the state of play direct itself clearly was trying to get me hyped for an Iron Man game and believe me I was because as soon as I finished Marvel Spider-Man on PlayStation my head started running with these thoughts of what if they made an Iron Man game that's literally the one I wanted next and on a grand scheme of things I thought it would have been a really cool idea to capitalize on this Marvel game and start building a Marvel Cinematic Universe but in the video games so like a Marvel Gamematic Universe I don't know what you would call that and I do feel like it was kind of a psych out graphically it looked like like the Spider-Man game. He jumped out of that plane. You could see that it was Iron Man, like, and the Marvel came up and you're like, yeah, yes. This is why they did this state of play. It was just to announce the new Insomniac Iron Man game. And then it just got stripped away. As soon as they gave it to us, they took it away. And it was very disappointing. And it was hard actually for me to even get invested in the state of play after that because I was just sore about that the whole time. There was a bunch more VR stuff and then it ended on a Mortal Kombat 11 trailer and while that trailer looked actually pretty cool and I can't wait, it's not even a PlayStation exclusive and then it just ended. Like it just kind of felt like, why? So yeah, I, could, I, I can totally get why people were disappointed because there wasn't really much of a reason for it to even be a thing. That's my thoughts on all of that. I felt like I had to talk about the Switch revisions because I've been following this story for so long. The Stadia I hyped up on my channel and I wanted to follow it through and not just ghost the whole situation. And then State of Play, obviously it happened and you guys wanted me to talk about it, so there you go, I did. But what do you think of all three of these topics? I'd love to hear your thoughts down below. If you like this video or you learned a little something or you're still here, just smash that like button on your way down there as well as heft for lift. All over that subscribe button. Sometimes I run out of breath, and today I'm talking a mile a minute. That's it, guys. I'm working on some reviews right now. I finally have a list of 10 eShop games worth buying. I've been waiting for some good games to release on the eShop, and we finally got Final Fantasy VII, and it kind of just topped off my 10 list, and I'm good to go ahead and make it now. Bunch of stuff going on. I have game reviews coming. This is just a placeholder in the meantime. I hope you liked it. If you didn't, I mean, you probably, it's fine.